welcome to our last tech chat in, um, of August. It's hard to believe that it's August. Labor Day weekend is quickly right around the corner. And I think I heard that fall is, you couldn't tell by the heat, but fall is coming too. So um, again, uh, our mission at Tended to Top is to convene people and bring people together to talk about the upstate of South Carolina. And today we have as our guest speaker, Matt Bell, and Matt is the director of the South Carolina lunch and, um, and, and he's going to share some information. We, we do have some updates and we do have some folks um, right at the end that will give us some resource updates too. So with that, I will turn it over to Matt. I yeah, appreciate it. Thank you, Terrence. Um, I am going to share screen here if that's okay. Oh, someone else got a drop sharing. I don't know if that's you, Dean. There uh, we go. Justine, she's got it. All right. Uh, can everybody see South Carolina Research Authority screen? Yes. Okay. Well, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Matthew Bell. I am the uh, relatively new director of the SC Launch Program, which is an affiliate of SCRA. Um, I started with the organization in March of this year and actually just moved down to Greenville in June of this year. So um, what I'm about to present to you is my first time presenting it, and I will tell you that uh, I am an expert at many things, and I can answer a lot of questions, but on some of the aspects of SDRA and, and, and some of the things going on there, I'm going to give you an overview, but I'm, I'm not going to promise to be able to answer everything. So, But I do want to walk through um, kind of the organization, what we're doing. Uh, talk a little bit about my program, SC Launch, and what we're up to, um, especially coming out of the uh, COVID uh, situation last year, which I think had a dramatic effect on the entrepreneurial ecosystem at all levels across the country, but at, at, at here as well, and then um, open up for, for Q&A. Um, quick background on me. Um, I am Midwestern, uh, born and raised. I, I grew up in Illinois, and uh, I have a strong ag back, ag, agriculture background. Um, and uh, I, I've spent many years working in the ag industry, as well as many years working for universities, uh, doing startups out of uh, universities with tech transfer offices, and uh, doing uh, specifically sp focusing on startups as well. I ran a fund at the University of Michigan that actually invested in very early stage translational research to try to get technology off of campus and out into the ecosystem as fast as we possibly could. And we did a, a million dollars a year in that area. So um, a lot of experience working with and around universities, uh, University of Michigan, University of Illinois specifically. And then uh, also a quite a bit of experience working as a venture capitalist. Uh, I spent six years with uh, a group called Cultivian Sandbox Ventures in Chicago which is a food and agriculture focused venture capital fund, probably one of the first in the country that was a pure play food and ag um, and did that for six years out of Chicago before coming down here. So just give you a quick background on me. Um, the organization I'm gonna talk about is the South Carolina Research Authority. And can everybody, again, everybody can see the slides okay? Okay, let's go. Let's talk about uh, the organization. So. South Carolina Research Authority covers the entire state of South Carolina. Uh, we are in essence an economic development organization uh, for the state of South Carolina. And we have offices throughout the state and um, support activities across the state. And the focus is on economic development um, really in three primary areas. Um, one is SC Launch, which is my program, which focuses on funding support for startup companies. Two is SC Academic Innovations, which focuses upon uh, working with universities and finding ways to create synergies with them to drive innovation out. And three is Industry Solutions, which works directly with the industry uh, uh, within South Carolina, uh, groups like BMW uh, or Train, as an example. Um, why I think it's important that you, you see all of this is because uh, from an ecosystem standpoint, we touch all of the bases. We look for synergies between them and we interact with all of them. And uh, it, it creates a, a really interesting dynamic internally that our network and our capabilities and our um, uh, resources are, are broad uh, within the state and in some cases deep, but breadth is really important. 
when I look at an ecosystem uh, from an economic development standpoint, I tend to look at three things. You know, what is the talent level of the ecosystem from a technical standpoint or from a business standpoint or from an industry standpoint? Um, what is the technology that's coming into that ecosystem and how is it being commercialized and developed and, and pushed through the system with momentum? And uh, what is the funding uh, activities within that system? And are there gaps in any of those three areas that uh, uh, are inhibiting the ability for um, innovation to really grow and spread within the ecosystem? And, and we touch all three of those areas. So um, I'm gonna dig in a little deeper into those as I go. We also focus on some key sectors, advanced manufacturing, information technology, and life sciences. Um, as you're probably well aware, these are three areas within the state that are very, very strong and are doing very well. Um, most of the startups that we see within the launch group come from one of these, are, are, are focused in, in these areas. And uh, it, by focusing in these areas, it allows us to, to create some depth in terms of our contacts, uh, how we, the, the types of deals we've looked at, um, how we can get synergy between different things, um, these are kind of three key areas that we focus in quite a bit on. Impact as an organization, you know, we've, we've supported programs since FY20, uh, leading to probably close to 5,000 jobs within the state with 952 million in economic impact. Um, for every 10 jobs supported by SCRA, and I'll say that right, jobs supported by SCRA, we're, we're getting an additional 15 jobs created elsewhere. So. The funding that we put to work is leveraged um, heavily across the state and, and brings more capital in. Um, part of the, the presentation I gave earlier about uh, early in the week was on, you know, what is the impact of entrepreneurs? What kind of impact could entrepreneurism have within a, a state environment? And entrepreneurism should be and, and is considered to be one of the key, thing, key cornerstone pieces for economic development for any state, and it should be, because uh, the amount of capital, the, the leverage of capital within our space, our space is really, really dramatic. Uh, in some cases, 10 to 1, 11 to 1, 12 to 1, you can see some returns coming back to the state uh, for the investments made. My program specifically is SC Launch. Um, we are the investment arm, or the investment affiliate of uh, SCRA. We focus ex pretty much exclusively on startups, uh, the entrepreneurial ecosystem, um, supporting those startups, getting them going. Uh, we do it across the state, Greenville, Columbia, uh, uh, Charleston, uh, Myrtle Beach, wherever, it's, wherever the startups are, we, we, we are active and try to uh, identify them and help them through the, the hoops of, of, of this. We work with uh, startup uh, founders who are brand new to this approach, and we spend a lot of time with them supporting them. And in other cases, we're working with companies that are very sophisticated and have gone through it two or three times and are, are, are have an entirely different set of needs. And we, we kind of cover that gambit. We do mentoring and support from our team and resource partners. Uh, we have an entire network of resource partners from across the state, which are companies that are in the state that support startups from intellectual property to marketing consulting to uh, website development. We, we have a, a full uh, a plethora of companies that are part of our resource partner network that we can tap into. Um, and we have uh, my team, there's four people, actually five people now that, that are, are, are across the state who um, actively support the startups through mentoring and guidance um, and are very experienced uh, entrepreneur uh, people within themselves. Um, we do events and marketing. This has obviously uh, been difficult the last year. I think we were probably more effective in the pre-COVID world, but we're adapting as well. And we have begun a whole series of webinars. Uh, uh, in fact, we just partnered with the USPTO to do a four-part series on how to do patents and how to manage patents and how to think about patents. Um, this morning, I was on another webinar with a law firm here from Greenville that focused upon uh, patent strategy around patent enforcement and how to uh, structure your patent strategy uh, for your portfolio. Um, so we're, we also do uh, a number of webinars with uh, CEO podcasts, which are very popular. We're uh, uh, alumni of our program come back and, and, and or participants in our program that are more, more mature come in and talk about their experiences uh, as an entrepreneur and pushing their startups forward. And, um, those have been very, very popular, as I said. 
We also do grant funding, which I'll talk about here in a bit. And we do um, uh, investments, uh, equity investments, meaning we take some ownership within the company. From funding perspective, we do project development grants uh, up to $25,000. These are the first grant that we can offer to early stage companies. Usually what they're doing is just starting to get their first idea of what the startup is and what the minimum viable product is. And we can come in and provide some funding support for them at that level. We also do acceleration grants, which is really starting to think about, okay, now that I've got my first product in place, what's the product market fit? And that usually involves going out and actually talking to customers and trying to figure out, okay, how do I, how do I, how do I fit this into the marketplace and what's the business model going to start looking like? And then as the company matures to the point where they're looking for investment capital, um, we can put in you know, anywhere from two to 300,000 per investment uh, for equity investments as well. Um, for this portion of our, of our portfolio, um, we act like investors. Uh, we, we treat the companies like we are, you know, professional investors, we vet them like we're professional invest in investors, and we, we do say no quite a bit. Um, part of the reason for that is, is we're trying to maintain a fund that's sustainable going forward and trying to make sure that the fund is uh, uh, in, in position to offer the same type of services 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, which means that we need to have a return on investment for those investments. It also helps the entrepreneur um, at that stage because they're getting ready to approach venture capitalists and professional investors in the ecosystem beyond us. And if we're, we're a little hard on them at that stage, it really helps them get to the point where they're, they're kind of battle ready once they get into presentations with VCs and, and that type of thing. Um, we still support them with mentoring. We still support them with some support services. We still spend quite a bit of time with the companies, but that, that's a different level as they start to move into the SD launch investments. Again, 53 million in investments since 2006, 2.1 billion in follow-on funding to our investments. So there's a lot of capital leverage going on here. And the average salary of most of our uh, uh, jobs created is about 74,000. Um, nice part about an entrepreneurial uh, ecosystem is it allows for uh, elasticity. And what I mean by that is, is you suddenly have entrepreneurs who can pop up and take advantage of situations within the marketplace and allow for growth in areas that you didn't expect there to be growth a year or two ago. Um, a perfect example is COVID-19. Um, there's about 22 companies right here that have solutions from uh, uh, our companies and our partner companies that are focused upon COVID-19 technology sets. Um, I think this is a great example of, of why entrepreneurism is so important for a state and regional economy. Um, it allows you to adapt, and that's exactly what you're seeing here in South Carolina as well. Also allows you to do uh, grow, uh, wealth creation. Uh, Proterra is a company that's located here in Greenville. Um, fantastic company that went public uh, within the last year. Uh, our, our, uh, our CEO of SCRA was, uh, actually went with the Proterra team and got to ring the, ring the uh, NASDAQ bell on the day that they were uh, they went public, which was an event that I told them you really need to enjoy because this is extremely rare. But uh, we were involved early on with uh, some of the investments with Proterra about 10 years ago. Uh, they ran in some funding issues. We stepped up, Venture South stepped up, a couple of other individuals stepped up and uh, propped the company up and got them going. And it's a, it's a tremendous success story for the area. We are also tied into the Palmetto Tech Bridge, which is part of the Naval Information Warfare Center out of Charleston. Um, and uh, there are a number of these uh, tech centers across the state uh, country. There's 15 of them, and we are one of them. Um, the intent there is to tie in our connections with industry and with academia to uh, the Naval Research uh, uh, groups and to find synergies and find ways to for technology to interface within those organizations. And we are a key cog for that uh, process and that activity. We, we meet with them very regularly and we have staff who are dedicated to supporting activities there. Different program, I see academic innovations. Uh, we call it SKY for short. One of the three programs I talked about before, the three areas we were focused on. Um, they also do grants, SBIR, STTR support. Their focus is really on innovation and uh, technology development off of campuses. So academic startup assistant programs, maturation, prototyping, and matching grants uh, for, for universities. 
And then there's a large grant that we do with uh, universities. It's multi-year, uh, 2.7 million over three years, which focuses on the creation of innovation centers that are important to industry. Um, and that's something we've been doing for a while as well. Uh, by the numbers, 47 companies uh, have come out supported by NCRA, 9.9 million in support with 29 million in follow-on funding. Again, this is really important activity uh, for us to support this and to uh, create momentum in this area to bring our best technologies out of those out of those campuses and into the real world. Success story on that is Pensy Vision out of Charleston. Uh, it's a small device that does 3D images to, uh, for internal scope uh, to detect uh, pre-cancer cervical lesions. lesions uh, a really interesting technology. They received the perfect, uh, they received a perfect score from the NIH on a grant application that they put in, which is exceedingly rare for that to occur. Uh, and it was really a, a, a blessing from the NIH that this is a real technology with real applications and they did everything they could to bless it with a perfect score. Um, and we are working with them right now to uh, build out the business model and define the, uh, the, the applications of the technology in the clinical setting. Baby Strong is another one. Uh, this is a device to uh, help improve feeding uh, of babies that normally would be put on gastric tubes if they're not feeding properly or struggling with uh, uh, taking the bottle of the nipple. Um, and this was a, uh, a device that was granted uh, FDA approval out of, I believe, MUSC, yeah, MUSC Foundation. So another one out of Charleston. Industry Solutions, uh, SC Industry Solutions is our third group. And again, they work primarily with, with most of our corporate partners across the state of all sizes, um, focusing on R&D efforts, high-tech solutions, strategic partnerships. Um, we've got a couple companies out of state that we're helping to come back, to come into the state. In fact, there's one medical company out of Seattle right now that we're working with to uh, streamline and, and help them to come into South Carolina from Seattle. And as you can guess um, with, with uh, the economy here, uh, the stability of the government with uh, just the, the, the living quality of life. Um, there are a lot of companies that are looking to come this way and it's something that this group actively focuses on. They also do uh, a number of grants, demonstration grants and relocation grants uh, for the industry partners. And 52 jobs created, 21-22, 295,000 in funding support, 457,000 in magic commitments. Uh, one project that they put to, that, that they highlight is uh, working with Train Technologies, the heating and cooling group down in Columbia. Uh, they had a partnership that they put together with a group called IOTCO, um, focused on data uh, and data analytics around manufacturing. And from there, they developed a pilot project, which turned into a prototyping program, which turned into a, uh, a manufacturing base uh, across the state. We'll be let, I think, I don't remember how many manufacturing units that are groups they've got, but this is something they're gonna integrate into their manufacturing process. Um, all part of industry 4.0, if you've heard that term in, 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 the, uh, in the manufacturing area. This is, I think, really important because just because of the amount uh, and the quality of manufacturing we have across the state, this is exactly the type of uh, exercise that we we're trying to promote and, ex and, and help execute on. Oh, and then the fourth group I should mention is the facilities group. We do have a number of uh, facilities with incubators uh, and, and uh, space for startups and for research. Uh, 22 West Edge in Charleston. There's an Applied Technology Center in Somerville. There's a USC Innovation Center, an MUSC Innovation Center, and a Duke Innovation Energy Center. So we've got an, an, a number of spaces across the state where innovation is going on within the facility, um, as well as uh, research, as well as uh, entrepreneurial support activities. 1.3 million square foot total, six facilities, 50 companies are supported in those offices. Uh, highlighting the McNair Center down with USC. Uh, this is, I think this is one of our larger facilities. Um, they do health innovation, robotics, smart appliance lab, acoustic and visual blockchain AI manufacturing lab. I believe this one we've got, one of these we've got an attack helicopter actually located in the facility they do some research on, which is kind of cool. I haven't seen it yet, but I keep thinking I got to get a, a tour over to that group. 
Um, so there's, there is a lot going on just within our facilities across the state as well. And I will stop there and hit you with a lot and uh, uh, I'll, I'll open it up for questions. Well, great, thank you, uh, Matt. And please, if you have any questions, put them in the chat or let me know and we'll unmute you. Um, I'm gonna let Aaron, if you, uh, since you're our entrepreneur uh, uh, expert, if you have wanna uh, chime in with anything, please. But um, what I'm gonna start, Matt, with, with just a general question is, is there a similar entity to SCRA in many other states? You know, there, there are, um, uh, there, you know, there's, there's, there's other groups that definitely do funding like my, my organization, Missouri's got one, Pennsylvania's got one. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you couldn't find some semblance of that within each state. Um, as I look at Illinois and Michigan, where I came from, you know, there's a group called Invest Detroit, which I actually benchmark with quite a bit that, that is actually the exact same size and, and age of the fund that we run. Um, and it's been a fantastic resource for me. But, you know, honestly, there, there aren't too many organizations that cover the breadth of what SCRA does. I mean, if you're to be involved with the academic, the industry, and the, the entrepreneurial ecosystems all at the same time is pretty rare. Um, and as someone who's, who's been in, in kind of this space for the last 20 years, that's, that's really what attracted me to this program and this state and this activity was because... Uh, um, this is a program that's, that, that, you know, does a lot of things that you don't necessarily see or hear about, but um, they are plugged into a lot of different areas. There's a lot of synergies created, and the reach of my program as an entrepreneurial support program is, is really enhanced by the industry support team, which can help me with customer discovery on projects, um, and vice versa. I can go down to the Sky team, the academic innovations team, and really help them with some of their startups because we've got expertise in that area. And to see that streamlined and in one organization is very rare. We do have a question uh, from Joey uh, Lohman. Uh, you mentioned about uh, COVID related ventures and uh, he's interested in learning a little bit more. Uh, are you the person that he would reach yeah, out to? Reach out to me. Um, we did some COVID loans last year. Um, that program was basically for a time frame towards the end of last year and we're, we're not doing those anymore, but. Um, let's let's talk anyway and see if there's other ways we can help. Um, and oh, sorry, go ahead. Aaron, you want to go ahead? Well, I, uh, Matt, it is great to meet you, and thank you so much for presenting today. Absolutely. Uh, we, we work closely with Steve Johnson. He's been a yep. very good friend to our upstate entrepreneur ecosystem, and and Steve 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 reports to me. Yep. Okay. Yep. He's just fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so, but I was curious. You know, we up up here in our ten counties in the upstate. Uh, Greenville seem, is pretty much the center of a lot of the innovation. Or, mm -hmm. so, but if you're in one of the other counties, how do they get, if they have some, an entrepreneur who fits into one of your three buckets, how do they get your attention? Yeah, it's a great question. And, and we've actually talked about doing like a road show and going out into some of those areas and trying to increase our presence. Um, Honestly, I think it's just getting a hold of one of the, the investment managers like Steve or myself, even though Steve's based in Greenville and operates in Greenville. Uh, honestly, most of our deal flow comes from Greenville. A lot of it does, but that doesn't mean that Steve's not going up to Clemson or he's not going over to Rock Hill. You know, those, those, those are um, uh, responsibilities that he and I have as well. So I think it's just getting a hold of us and letting us know that there's something out there that's interesting that we need to communicate with and we'll set up a meeting and go to work. Okay, because we do have, thank you about for that. Um, we do have areas that are starting to build up their own local ecosystems and they are trying to figure out, they don't haven't necessarily identified the companies, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the innovations yet, but they're trying to introduce the community to the, to the, I mean, to the support providers. Yep. So maybe, I, so I'll talk to Steve about potentially. Yeah, put him in touch with either one of us. I was actually on the phone this week with Myrtle Beach working on mm -hmm. that exact thing with them. They're trying to get something going and we were trying to figure out how to support that activity. Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. So Matt, uh, we have another question uh, asking about the difference between um, SCRA and the South Carolina uh, uh, 
Council on Competitiveness? Um, I think I know the answer, but I'm going to let you. Uh, I I am not. Again, I started in March, so this is this is new to me. Well, but, uh, this the, is not an Council organization. Council on Competitiveness is not a funder. It is an or, an entity or an organization. And if there's anyone else on the on the call who can can expound a little bit more, but my understanding is they have more similarity to a ten at the top uh, in in terms of uh, what they. Uh, they do in terms of trying to to connect folks and build a collective capacity around issues uh, at the state level, but they are not a funder the way uh, SCRA is. Is Aaron is? Am I saying that correctly? Uh, yes, yes. They um, they provide connection as well as uh, training, workshops, and research. Uh, and but they're also very connected to um, Germany through, and I don't, I won't say this correctly. Um, but they, but they do not have the funding for the investment right. piece of it. So uh, hopefully, CK, that that answers that part. Um, but uh, Matt, they are an entity. If you have not connected with, certainly that I'm, I'm sure that others in your organization have worked with. Yeah. Um, I'm looking them up as a group. Maybe I should connect with. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm doing that actively right now, as we uh, uh, in, in my in my job. I tend to think SC competes works more with more mature companies. Yeah. As well. Right. So anyway, to to not get derailed in that piece. Um, I, I do have another question, kind of building on uh, what Aaron said, and, and we have a, a question in the in the chat uh, from Jerry about um, you know there are I guess 46 official uh, ecosystems in the state. Uh, Aaron, I'm not sure if that's uh, what that is correct, but um, in terms of partnerships and teamwork, um, Matt, you know you're relatively new, as you said, in the area. And you guys have maybe a little specific, you know, focus on in, yeah. within your organization. Uh, but uh, as Aaron said, um, you guys do connect with others within the ecosystems. How yep. important in your past experiences has been working with others who are in that space, Ben? And how uh, do you, you know, plan on continuing to do that yeah. here in the in South Carolina? I mean, at, at the at the as I said before, the most basic level I think of an ecosystem in terms of talent, technology, and and, and money. Um, no organization can do all three for everything. Um, it, it's really important that an ecosystem have a lot of different parts and that they're interconnected and that they're as seamless as you can make them, which is not always easy. Um, the best ecosystems are usually ecosystems where you see people who can move between those three elements as needed. Um, effectively. And, uh, uh, you know, the reason why MIT and Stanford are what they are is because they have all three of those things in an abundance. Um, and so uh, as I look at the 46 official ecosystems within the state, uh, I think the question becomes, okay, well, what are your limitations in those areas? And where do you get those resources to succeed? Is it funding? Is it talent, either technical or, or business? Or is it, you know, you, uh, technology development or technology identification? And you're probably going to have to go outside of your ecosystem to solve some of that. And that, that's an area where we might, where we might be able to help you um, for sure. But uh, uh, I think uh, for those ecosystems, finding ways to get out of their ecosystem and find where they can get the resources that can be leveraged within their ecosystem uh, is really critical. And uh, that's, that's, that's the simplest form of, of how I would define it. And again, we're a statewide organization. So in many ways, we can help with that. And uh, I just met yesterday the new uh, uh, Secretary of Commerce in South Carolina. How does your organization work with Department of Commerce? And Aaron can can talk about uh, can can echo that uh, they have uh, been supportive of entrepreneurship in the last two or three years, probably at a greater level than they had previously. But how yep. do you all work with with commerce? We 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 integrate as, uh, we we integrate with them quite a bit. Uh, we, we have regular meetings with the commerce teams and, and interactions with them. Um, part of what we also do is 
you know, what are ways that uh, we can identify and find ways to work together, but also identify gaps or communication issues that, that we could work together to overcome together. Um, as I said, this is a, you know, if, if for a robust ecosystem, you need to have a bunch of, of, of parts to it. And each of them usually is specialized and very good at what they are. And commerce in my mind kind of sits over top of all of that. And so um, to me, a direct communication and constant communication with them is important and vice versa. And them being able to interact with the different elements and figure out how to synergize them is also very important. We don't see our role necessarily as trying to bring that entire ecosystem together, but we do see ourselves as being a, uh, a strong participant within the ecosystem and someone who does try to find ways to synergize with the other elements of this ecosystem. Well, and I think another uh, differentiator for you all is uh, is the way you uh, leverage or utilize uh, your funding uh, in investing in companies specifically instead of, you know, typically uh, commerce and the local economic development organizations are, are giving incentives, you know, through cities and county governments, yeah. uh, which is a different type of, of support. But you all can actually, uh, you know, help smaller companies that maybe aren't at a level yet to, to yeah. receive funds from uh, commerce or from local economic development. Yeah, my, my, my team's core competency, if you will, if you allow me to use those words, are really around how do I, how do I take this technology or this company at, at whatever stage it's at, whether it's its first founder and an idea to maybe a couple people together and some, some revenue um, and get it to a point where a professional investor would look at it and say, yeah, I want to put some more money into it. And that, that is a very unique skill set. And it is a skill set that um, is very, very focused upon one company and getting that company there. And as you can imagine, it's very different from a med company to, to a supply chain company to an AI company. Each one's a different model. Um, so that's really where my team and the launch team focuses is, is, is on that granular level and figuring out how to move those forward. We also have a, a funding base that, as I said before, we're trying to maintain as a sustainable funding base so that it, it's in existence in 20 to 30 years. I mean, it's already uh, 14 years old, which is pretty amazing, which means that we also have to be judicial and, and execute as if we were an investor with, a, with that funding base. And, um, I am pleased to say that funding base right now is, uh, uh, I, is, is revenue positive and has, is doing extremely well. And we're actually funding ourselves this year for the first time. So the fund is doing very, very well. So, and it's a testament to, I think, some of the technologies that's come out of South Carolina that that's the case, uh, Proterra being a great example of that. Um, and we want to maintain that. And, and so, uh, you know, I think having the discipline that an investor unit would have uh, and bringing that to bear on the companies is also important, not just for the fund, but also for those companies as well. And that's something we do as well. The one area where we're, we're, we're working on, but we haven't quite figured out yet, is what do you do with a really good lifestyle company? And what I mean by that is, you know, where our, where our fund works really well is a company that you invest into it in five to 10 years, that company then sells out and then you can reap the reward of that, that company that, that, that exited as we call it, but has sold itself to someone else and then you, your shares are now bought and you can get your cash back. Um, what do you do with companies that are not in that path, that are you know, lifestyle companies that are probably gonna be around for 20 or 30 years, but are still creating jobs, that are still creating revenue, that are still doing the things that we're tasked to do as an economic development group. And that's something we're struggling on, something we're working on, and we're going we're to try to see if we can find some solutions in that area going forward. But uh, uh, right now, our base is really those, those technology companies that are moving towards exit. Great. Erin, anything else? Uh, thank you, Dean. Um, many questions that I will hold off, but Matthew... We're very excited that you're here and that you are thinking about rural and that you're thinking about lifestyle companies. That's, uh, you know, the great thing about a lifestyle company is it tends to stay in town yep. forever and it tends yep. to reinvest in town and reinvest in the little league. And, you know, so it creates a substantial amount of wealth locally. Yeah. So yeah. very glad to hear you're thinking about that. But thinking about it, the challenge is building a sustainable model to continue to support those over time. That's, that's the challenge. Yeah. Um, but yeah. 
Yeah, Absolutely. I agree with everything you said. Revenue returns and things like yep. that. There's, so, but good. And thank you. Matt, um, thank you. If, if you could uh, put your contact information in the chat for folks. I did. Uh, that way uh, there, they, there isn't, there is a, a, a Matt, Matt dot, M-A-T-T dot B-E-L-L at S-C-R-A dot org. That email address is in the chat bar. Oh, perfect. And I saw someone was, was slightly confused about our structure. That's not unusual. Uh, feel free to reach out. I'll walk you through it. Perfect. Well, Matt, again, welcome to South Carolina and to the upstate. And uh, we're glad to have you here. And uh, we appreciate uh, everything that SCRA does uh, in South Carolina and, and helping to, to uh, leverage resources uh, for economic development and for entrepreneurship. So we look forward to continuing to work with you. I know you'll, you and, and Steve and others are involved with the Start Grow Up State initiative that Aaron uh, leads for us. So we look forward to having your involvement with that. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate your time. Great. Well, um, real quickly, I will share a couple um, updates for everyone. Aaron or Erica, if you could uh, put in the chat uh, the, um, the schedule of, of events coming up. Um, you see here uh, our uh, funding partners and I, I don't, our leadership level partners, and I don't remember every time to say thank you uh, to them and all of our funding partners. Uh, we're very blessed uh, to have a lot of great supporters. So I wanna take a minute and thank them. Um, next Monday, you guys have heard me talking about it for quite a while. On August 30th is our Blues, Brews and Barbecue uh, Networking Expo Extravaganza at GSP International Airport. Um, it is an outdoor event with tents. So we're doing everything we can to make sure it is uh, a safe environment for everyone. Um, so please, I hope you will plan on joining us. It's going to be a, a wonderful event starting at 3.30 uh, in the afternoon. Registration closes tomorrow at noon. So uh, if you're a tenth top partner, you should have received information about your complimentary tickets. And if you are not, it is only $30 and there's food and barbecue and, and uh, beverages and, it, and great music. Mac Arnold uh, and a plate full of blues will be there. So it's going to be uh, a wonderful event. Um, so um, please plan on that. You can see uh, in uh, the events calendar things we have coming up. It was a busy week this past week uh, with a number of uh, workshops. We have a little bit of a lull uh, in the, the early part of September, and then we will uh, pick that back up. Uh, in September, we're going to have two TAT chats, have a great one coming up uh, on the night. Uh, Jim Shu. Uh, from and, and uh, George Shira are going to talk about specific impacts of COVID. Jim on uh, employee benefits and George on uh, uh, who is with Milliken on uh, uh, company um, procedures and protocols. Uh, so I think that will be a really good one. And then on the uh, 23rd, uh, we have uh, Congressman Jeff Duncan uh, who joined us very early on. Uh, a year and a half ago in COVID, and and uh, we I think we all had hoped uh, that this next visit with him would not have to focus so much on COVID, and we'll see where we are in another three or four weeks, but he will be joining us. And then in October, we're going to move to once a month, and we'll send out the calendar for the remainder of the year uh, for uh, those events. Also wanted to mention that just like almost everybody else, uh, we at Tenth to Top are hiring. Uh, we're hiring a part-time administrative uh, assistant. If you are uh, interested in a part-time job or know someone who is looking for uh, a part-time job with some flexibility um, to support some of our efforts, uh, we would love to uh, speak with that person. So uh, Erica has put that information in the chat and we are hoping to add another person uh, to our team soon. So with that, um, I will turn it over Justine to you and let you introduce our resources. Thank you, Dean. Hey, everyone. Um, Mr. Bounds, I see you're on, but I'm going to flip this a little bit since we're talking about innovation and entrepreneurship and economic development. If you don't mind, I'd like to ask Franny Stockwell from the Cherokee County Chamber to talk a bit about what they do 
uh, out in Cherokee. And as always, she's in her car. Yes, I am always on the go. But I appreciate you asking. And I, I love hearing from Matt, especially I'm like you with the lifestyle companies, because that is something that Cherokee County also is trying to work on as to how we can pull them in and make them feel more appreciated at the same time because of it, all that they do in Cherokee County. But I will talk about what we do to help entrepreneurs. So when we have new businesses come in, we actually go out and help look. So economic and development does that more for the industries here in Cherokee County, but we also go out and try to find new small businesses and other kinds of businesses to come to Cherokee County. We don't have many resources here, so a lot of what we do, we send outside of Cherokee County. Um, Ten at the top has been a big help with getting connections with that, as well as the New Start Grow Upstate website. We send a lot of people to that website to try to, especially the new businesses, they want to know what kind of um, licenses they have to get, what kind of budget they need, things like that that they don't normally think about. So that website has helped them out a good bit. Um, we also send them to SC Workforce when they're looking for new jobs and looking for new people to come in, some of the new businesses. Um, Institute of Innovation here in Cherokee County is a really great resource for new businesses coming in. Um, they are high school students that go through a program at the Institute of Innovation on trade skills. So a lot of like our freight liners, Tempkins, things like that are looking for students that can come in with good work ethic that will be on time, work, and that's what the Institute of Innovation teaches those students. So once they complete the program, they graduate their senior year with a certificate to be able to go straight into work or continue on to college. So that's a good resource for us as well. Um, we also have SBDC, which is the Small Business Development Center. They help us out a lot. They come to Cherokee County from Winthrop to meet with people that are looking to start new businesses here. And then also our business generators. So they um, let new businesses come in and try rent a space within their building so that they can start out, see, they help them with the budget, they help them with what their vision and mission is supposed to be, help them get on their feet. And then after a certain amount of time, they graduate those new businesses out to their own buildings and on their own time. So that's a great resource. And Brian Ziegelhafer is over that. So they work well with the city and all of us work together on that project. And we're hoping to expand that. They just expanded into their, their own building and they've renovated. So we're hoping to expand that to the Blacksburg area as well. So I would love um, to reach out to you, Matt, at a little um, sometime to get more information on other resources and maybe hopefully starting here at something here in Cherokee County where it's all in the same, you know, all in one place if that's possible. Uh, I look forward to it, Franny. Thank you. That's about all I have, Justine. Thank you so much. I had a note about, did you, I'm sorry, did you mention no to? We, I didn't, but we do work with them as well. And they are a great resource as far as grants go and um, just getting new businesses started. They kind of do a little bit of ed everything. So education, financials, new business, different things. So they help out a lot. I, I remember trying to look it up when I first started with 10 at the top and it took me so long, but now I know it's K and O W too. And not, yes. you know, there were so many ways I tried to get it. Thank and you, Franny. So, you're welcome. There's so many resources they can provide. This, Would um, you, sorry, go ahead. Well, I was going to say what Franny has done in Cherokee County is a very good example of connecting ecosystems. She, you know, they looked at what they had locally and then they looked at outside of their county to see what was available and so that they could connect their business owners uh, to them wherever they were. So y'all just do such a great job, Franny. <laughs> Thank you. Alrighty. Thank you so much, Franny. Um, if you can, I, well, I can, I'll put your email in the, um, in the chat for you since you're in the car. Thanks again, as always, for joining us. And last but definitely not least, uh, we're doing a little fun little fun thing at the end today. Not that this all wasn't really fun. Uh, Larry Bounds from Chautauqua 
History Comes Alive Festival is going to be talking about the upcoming festival. And um, another, you know, always learning. I, I know how to spell Chautauqua now. Mr. Bounds, uh, take it away. Hello there. Uh, I'm Larry Bounds, and I'm a uh, school teacher, a retired now school teacher from Greenville County. And for the last almost 20 years, I have been involved in the Greenville Chautauqua Festival, which is also known as the History Comes Alive Festival because it's so much easier to spell than <laughs> Chautauqua. Um, for over 20 years, uh, with a fully volunteer staff, uh, we have put together a program that actually attracts participants from all over the country to come here to the upstate. Um, of course, last year was uh, difficult with the virus, and we went to all uh, the entire summer, in fact, throughout the year of doing uh, entirely online programs. This year, um, we rescheduled our normal 10-day summer festival from June into September because certainly by September, the virus cases would be so much lower that it would be the best time. And of course, if you go back and look at the charts, if we'd actually gone on in June, we would have had the best chance of, of, of missing the most infected people who would know. Um, however, we are planning to have the festival this year. Um, We've done a few changes uh, to make the festival work in the current environment. For those of you who have no clue what Chautauqua is, um, that, that's why we use the title also History Comes Alive. You have a chance to meet people from history. Uh, this year, you'll have a chance to actually ask questions of and meet with uh, Benjamin Franklin, with Thomas Edison, with Nikola Tesla, with uh, the famous movie star, Hedy Lamarr, who invented, uh, our theme is Reinventing America. Uh, she's known as a great movie star, but a lot of people don't know that she actually patented and invented the uh, system that makes most of our cell phones function and work today while designing a remote controlled torpedo system in World War II. How's that for, uh, for creativity? And Rosa Parks, who helped in many ways to reinvent the way that our society works. Well, these characters will be live and in person at the Malden Cultural Center. Now, we are going to be performing on an outdoor stage so that we'll have that nice grassy area in front of the stage in the back of the Greer Cultural, uh, the, not Greer, the Malden Cultural Center. Um, plenty of parking, plenty of space for people. Um, everything's outdoors, everything is separated. Um, we did have some indoor events planned, but uh, due to the rapid increase in contagion that we've gone through the last few weeks, they've all been moved into the virtual, virtual the virtual round range, and they'll all be being done online uh, when you have a chance to meet with the performers out of character and uh, when you have a chance to, um, uh, in the event of rain, because one of the problems with having a totally outdoor festival is that if a tropical storm blows up somewhere, it's possible we'll have a night or two when we get washed out. But those shows will also go online. All the arrangements have been made to, to make that easy. Um, for those of you who've not been to a Chautauqua festival, what happens is when you come to the festival, you are introduced to, for example, Benjamin Franklin. He will come out on stage in character, a performer who's studied the life of Benjamin Franklin for some time, and uh, he will come out as Benjamin Franklin and speak to the audience about the theme of the event, which is Reinventing America. You will then have, a, and of course, Franklin is a great example of that because he did in many ways invent the America that we have today. Um, after he speaks with the words that Franklin actually used in similar discussions and talks, uh, for about 30 minutes, then the audience will be invited to ask questions of Dr. Franklin, and you'll be able to ask questions. Now, you're limited because Franklin passed away in the late 1700s, 
So you can't really ask him any detailed questions about things that happened after the time he died because he would have no knowledge of that. But um, after Franklin has answered questions from the audience, then we have the presenter step out of character and then that person can respond to questions that may try to pertain, for example, something that's going on now with something that happened in Franklin's life and he could draw the parallels between them. And the COVID virus is one of those things because uh, Franklin was in Pennsylvania in Philadelphia, which was frequently uh, struck with smallpox and yellow fever. And there was, believe it or not, an active campaign of vaccination in Franklin's time. He wrote editorials advocating getting vaccines and he dealt with arguments about whether people could trust doctors to give them vaccines. And, and so if you wanna know what Franklin thought about all that, you could talk to him during the festival. Um, anyway, uh, that's, that's we're performing starting on with Franklin on September the 3rd, and then the festival goes through that weekend, every night that week, and then the following weekend, ending with Hedy Lamar. Each performer will be doing two daytime shows. I'm um, sorry, one daytime show and two evening shows there at the Malden Cultural Center. Uh, it's Shows are free of charge. Um, we receive funding not only from contributions from the people who attend, but we also receive contributions from such folks as the Metropolitan Arts Council and the South Carolina uh, Humanities uh, Commission. Uh, the, the, uh, anyway, um, we have several organizations and, and we, of course, uh, in our normal festival times have drawn people from as far away as Texas and California who came to Greenville, bought airline tickets, reserved hotel rooms, attended our restaurants and other cultural events, all brought here by the fact that we have one of the largest most well-produced Chautauqua or History Comes Alive festivals in the country. There, I think I've thrown it all out there as quickly as possible. <laughs> Thank you so much. It sounds so interesting. I am ashamed now that I haven't been yet after 20 years. I know Dean was the one who said, hey, we need to have uh, Chautauqua do something because he's been with his family and really loves it. Well, and, so and actually, Justine, I'm going to share if I, if I can here. Do you guys see a picture there? <laughs> my son Nate with Davy Crockett back uh, six or seven years ago, I think, Larry, uh, yeah. when you guys had Davy Crockett there. And uh, then my daughter, the same year, got invited to be on stage and had um, um, the, the song from Camelot um, sung to her on stage. So for kids, it, it was a, a lot of fun, and I think it really is. I am so glad, Larry, that you guys uh, are having the, the festival this year, uh, even if it's not exactly the same as it has been in other years, because it is a great family event, and you do typically uh, things in Greenville and in Spartanburg, and I think even up in Asheville uh, at some years, so... Uh, you know, even though you can't maybe do everything that you would like to do in a normal year, just to be able to get back and do some of it, I think will be uh, really uh, great. And I encourage anyone to uh, participate. If, if I may throw in here, uh, I don't know, am I on? You're on. Yes. Okay. I'm just going to say that if I may throw it, I throw this out as well. Um, we will be doing one day up in Asheville. Once again, everything's planned for outdoors. And we are doing four days during the week or five days during the week. We are performing also in Brevard. Um, so typically we are at a couple of dozen different venues during the 10 days of Chautauqua. But this year here in the Greenville area, we decided outdoors with space, multiple performances in the same location to keep the audiences actually a little smaller than usual for one show. That way everyone can spread out, enjoy the fresh air, enjoy meeting, you know, uh, how often do you have a chance to meet Thomas Edison, right? It's, it's something you shouldn't pass up. Now, you can find the full schedule all the times at historycomesalive.org. 
and the whole schedule, all the performers, we have performers coming in from California, from up north, from all over to do this, scholars who do these shows. Um, so historycomesalive.org, you can find all the information you need. And I hope everyone has a chance to come out and attend either online, virtually, or in person. Assuming with an outdoor show, the weather's nice. Well, we hope that you have a wonderful um, two weekends and week, great weather. And we hope to see you there, probably on the stage as well. I, I will be there and I'm emceeing a couple of shows and helping out as one of the characters as well. Great. Thank you so much for coming on to talk about it with us. Thank you very much. All right, Mayor, I think we're ready to wrap up. Thank you, Justine, and, and thanks again to everyone that participated in the chats, especially Matt, um, the information you gave us. And there's always a lot of good things to do in the upstate and a lot of good things going on. So um, you still have time to come by and buy tickets for Monday night. And so um, do that. It's going to be fun. And I hope everybody has a good weekend. Okay. See you later. Thank you, Terrence. Bye, everybody. See ya. <laughs>